let's start by reading Psalm 91 responsibly. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will live in the shadow of God. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the battle of snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and ramparts. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the air of the flies by the head of the night, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. It is said, the Lord is my refuge. And may as well tie your tongue. No. Oh my goodness, I lost my tongue. <laughs> okay. No harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your test. For you will be the concerning you, the Lord will be in all your ways. They will lift up in their they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will look at him with a great life in his servant. Because he loved me, said the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will make to him. I will be with him in sorrow. I will deliver him in honor. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So our introduction today comes from the Christian Worship Psalter. The blue handles that we read in church, there is a gray version of it that's called the Psalter. And it has all the psalms that we either say or sing in the worship. And if you look closely at the bottom of pages where the psalms are located, they have a really nice introduction and prayer for every single psalm. So I pulled the introduction from the Psalter for today. The church sings Psalm 91 in services that focus on times of crisis, especially temptation or persecution. The lion and the snake, verse 13, are sometimes scriptural references to the devil. And the devil uses this psalm to tempt Jesus, Luke 4, verse 10 and 11. Martin Luther said, Psalm 91 is a comfort psalm. It encourages us to trust in God through all distress and affliction. It is full of rich, comforting promises derived from the first commandment. It is the second psalm, after Psalm 34, in which the dear angels are proclaimed to be our guardians, which is comforting and good to us. So let's get right into the questions here. Consider the structure of Psalm 91. With your group writing an outline of this psalm, one of the main points that the writer wants you to know. So you three will be a group, and you three will be a group, and you four will be a group. I don't know. I know that I think the whole thing is different parts of the building. I wrote, God is my friend. 
put myself in your hands back there because you know what I'm going to I'm going to fear and send his angels to protect. Y'all ready? Is there two on the so <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ready back there? <laughs> Okay, yeah, uh, we've got verses one and two. He covered us in mercy seat. He covered us in his mercy seat? Yeah, from but yeah, his mercy. And he carries the first name. He has legions of angels. He sends he, he and provides protection with his angels. With that? Army of the Lord. And then uh, 14 and 16. Salvation. God loves us and we need us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, mm -hmm. and a thing, you get them? Oh. Protection of the Lord. Yeah. 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 I'm always looking for something to hurt because anybody does any other group have any points that they they think is worthy to bring up that might be different than any of these other points? It's a promise from God. What is that? A promise from God. For what for what one? Uh, for the first one. Yeah. A promise from God. Mm -hmm. Awesome. The second one makes it yeah. <laughs> Anyone else have another thing they want to bring to the table? We have a refuge for number one two. Um, we know that's happening. That's yeah. happening. All right. Well, y'all were getting right around the mark that I was. Um, I had a theme that what shall I fear God is my fortress. I'm actually looking at verse two, where it does say he is our fortress. Um, the first is one and two, where it says God is our refuge, again, pointing back to. The words of the psalm. Verses 3 to 13, temptation and troubles will not overtake us. That was my theme. Um, and verses 14 to 16, a personal promise from God. Verse 14 to 16, I want to take a part from the psalm. We'll get to that. All right, number two. In verse one, there are two names of God that the psalmist uses. How do these two names remind us of who God is? 
We'll be going back to the Psalms. Yep. And what do those tell us about God? What is what is most high tell us about God? There's nothing else higher. No. Nothing else more mighty. Yep. Right. He's at the top. <laughs> and the Almighty. Top, no. most top God. God. He's above everything. He's more powerful than everything. Keep this bookmark in mind. We'll be going. We'll be going back to this. So number three. Take a take a close look at verses one to three. Note the change of the pronouns the psalmist uses. What can we what can we infer about how Psalm 73 was used in worship? Yes, Psalm 90. If I don't specify it, we're in Psalm 90. Same verse. Verses 1 to 3. I will say, I'm sure he will say to you, is that what we're looking at? Yep. Okay. Yep. Hmm. I will say, I'm sure he will say to you. So to me, it sounds like um, Pastor would say, I will say to he's my refuge, and then to the congregation, surely he will say to you. It's like it's to be used in worship. Yep. So that's, that's one of the ways that people say that it could have been used. Can anyone else think of a different way, especially with the I in verse two? How, how could that be used in worship? How could a priest or a pastor use verse, verse two? That kind of, well, verse two is kind of like a proclamation of your faith. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, you know how, like, when Pastor and I uh, were about to preach and we pull our hands and say a little prayer? Up there, one of the other things that people said that verse two could be is that's like a priest or a pastor saying a little prayer before he goes out and preaches the word. I, I believe what I'm about to say. God, God is my refuge. I'm about to tell all these people that He's their refuge too. Any questions on that? I will say, forgot to say. If anyone has any questions at any time during this Bible study, please raise your hand. Ask a question. I love questions. So, many verses in the Psalms talk about God being our refuge in your group. Look up these passages and note the context around them. We're going to go back to our original groups. I had set up before, so let me figure out how I'm going to do it for three. So. Group one, you'll look up 14, 46, and 61. Oh, and 62. The first four verses, yep. Back here, you got the 71, 73, and 91. The first 91. And then this group here, you have 91 verse 9, 94 verse 22, and 142 verse 6. Look those up within your group. Chat about them. What truths do the all the verses tell us? I got 62. Okay. I'll be uh 16 or 14. That's important. You gotta pay attention to what's happening around the song. What's happening is that. Makes God say, like, he was me, our refuge. Six, so he will nourish frustrated plans of the poor, but the Lord is very much. And so before that, it was a fool who said in his heart, and what that is they're doing after that is um, salvation is coming in the eye of the Lord is going to speak. What do you want to say about it? Yeah. 
So that starts at the beginning. My salvation comes from the hands of my rock and salvation is my fortress. And the sixth, the ninth, or the day of weights. Surely the low born, but a breath, the high born are but alive. It weighs on the balance. They are not coming together. They have a thing left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> born and I, I, um, my sometimes breaking down my salvation comes from him. And it doesn't matter if it's rich or everybody. Yeah. Also, there's no refuge of the it's verse eight. And God that that is exactly the eight. That's the one I want share that what your heart to and God about it. I should be right. I've just been aware, made aware that I might have some of these verses wrong. <laughs> that gone on me. But <laughs> what what should be right with all the verses is somewhere in the chapter that this all the psalm is going to say that. Uh, it's So has everyone come up with the two truths that we find in all these different places in the Psalms that talk about God being our refuge? When we're, when we're reading the psalm and we fear, uh, we know we have confidence that He is uh, holding our right hand and He is holding our right hand. Yeah, so the two truths in there one, we're going to be weak, there's going to be a lot of bad times. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Psalms were written by David. And throughout David's life, he's being hunted by Saul, people that wanted to hurt him. Uh, there was a lot of down times in David's life. Um, and God never says as a Christian that everything's going to be peachy and easy for you. He actually says the opposite. Because you love me, others will hate you. Um, and the Psalms will remind us of that. But the gospel, the, the psalm, the, the, the comfort in the psalm is that even when you're weak and the world's coming around you, it's coming to get you, um, God's right there beside you. He doesn't leave you out to dry. He, he is your refuge. He is your fortress. He is your strength. Can I, can I say one thing? Yeah. Talking about David, it in these psalms and talking about the trials he had with Saul and he yeah. had lost he, you know he, he did not dishonor him. Yeah. He gave him chances when he could have killed him, he still did. And then for the same with Absalom, he writes these songs about Absalom and about yeah. like a smooth son. And he always had compassion for his enemies, even in his prayers. Well, I mean, I think about when Saul was in the cave that David was yeah. hiding, uh -huh. and David was right there. Saul didn't see him, and David had every chance to kill Saul in that cave, but instead of him, Saul, he just cut off a piece of his cloak mm -hmm. to show he didn't kill Saul. He just he could have, but yeah. yeah. Um, and it's like time to lie to him. Saul not to see him too. Yeah. And I think David realized that also that that was a, fair, a protection from God. Yeah. So he wasn't going to violate it by doing wrong. Yeah. 
And so I would say that the majority of the Psalms are written by David. Other ones are written by other sons of Korah, Asaph, like we went through last week. Um, but then a lot of them don't have property as well. So, and Psalm 91 is one of those. We, we have no idea who wrote the psalm. Um, usually in a psalm, it will say a psalm of David or a psalm of Asaph. That's not in the psalm. Um, so historians and biblical historians, they for years and years try to figure out who wrote the psalm. We don't know. Could have been a random Levite, a random priest who was helping out in the temple. Could have been something really important in the whole story of salvation, but it doesn't say, but it doesn't matter who writes the song because it's God has inspired. All right. Back to back up off of our spiel, back to it. So, number five, verses three to seven have different ways that people are attacked. What can you infer? about how these attacks take place. Look at the different ways that the sin, that sin, the devil, the world, and the simple flesh trying to attack us. What does that tell us? Yeah, it's nighttime and daytime, illness, injuries, all sorts. Okay. Yeah, so they hit the nighttime and daytime. The attacks are never going to cease, they're always going to be around us. But what about pestilence or arrows? What what is that? What can you think? What does that make you think of? Just being attacked in yeah. any, any way, you know, somebody, you know, somebody trying to, you know, turn your face or turn you. But it's it's two different ways of being attacked, isn't it? I mean, air, an arrow. You can see someone shooting a bow at you, and you, you know that arrow is going to be coming. If there are blatant, blatant attacks um, that the devil of the world is simply flesh uses. It's blatant, and you see it coming. You see it coming. Yeah. You avoid it, but a pestilence, maybe not so much. Yeah. There's a pestilence, maybe you supply the water and you cut off the water, and now you're going to die because you don't have sustenance. Yeah. A pestilence. Mm -hmm. So I was that's more the bugs coming and getting in your hair. I was more thinking pestilence was like disease. Oh, disease. Um, you can't see disease coming, that's but cool. once it grabs you, it's 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 too late. And I I took that as from what I read, people take that as yeah, you're gonna have attacks that you are most definitely you can see them coming, but also things that you don't know that's coming for you, but yet yeah, they're still out there to hurt you. Um, Okay, you said that's the best Yeah, call them. Yeah. Yeah. Or right. or even worse, faith and pestilence, right? Something a danger that takes your faith out of time. It's like pestilence, like flying, like when when in Jeremiah when he told them that those who remained in Jerusalem they need to go on to that one, that you're gonna have to die by sword, by pestilence. And that grappling with, you know, day to day existence among people who are desperate, mm -hmm. trying to take in, uh, you know, hunger. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. Just bad. So you're asking what pestilence is? Yeah. Yeah. In, in, in this particular context, right? So it's more than a disease. It's it's disease. Yeah. But it's. A disease that you can't on your own, you wouldn't be able to keep from. Um, like when you use the word desperation. Yeah. Uh, I like. I like. I think it is the the desperation of a situation of. Yeah. You're gonna there are attacks coming from from all sides. You can either see them, you might not be able to see them, yeah. but it doesn't matter. Day day and night, they're coming for you. Mm -hmm. On your own, you can destroy. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So go back to question number two in our packets here. What is the answer to all these attacks and temptations that are all around us? The most high. The most high in the Almighty. Yeah. We were using the word um, desperation, being desperate on our own. That's what 
pestilence and arrows and attacks by day and night. That's what will be. We'll be desperate, hurt, dying. And those things are powerful. But the most high, the most almighty is higher than all that, bigger than all that, more powerful than all of that. So group discussion. In the Bible, we see tons of places where believers suffer disease, war, and other dangers. In our own lives, we see hurts in us and all around us. If God is our refuge, why do things still hurt us? I should have. I should have. <laughs> Because of the uh, no. <laughs> 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 I wish I could write through discussions and make people talk for longer. Y'all are good. You get it on the first try. <laughs> <laughs> you can flex down to that, that fancy Latin term that we're saying to sinners so we're struggling. Oh. Um. <laughs> I know. Then we could read the book of Romans together. That could take us minutes. <laughs> the tour said the cock or something. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Come on, come on. I so Pastor Sharp was a big Latin and German guy. He was in school. I took Spanish. I took one year of Latin. I don't remember any of it. <laughs> so in classes now, when the professor brings up Latin, I. They don't even look at me. Um, uh, don't even look at me. Like, someone, someone's got to tell me what that says. But when they need help talking in Spanish, is it not? See. See. Is it the same? Not where? But it's not very often when ancient Bible authors were writing. Yeah. 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 No, but it's practical. Yeah. Feel. Spanish I can't say it. It's dangerous. I'm closing it. It's just funny. You don't just smile. You know, fear not. You can start laughing. Okay. All right. Well, we are getting way off the track here. I did. What about telling one part of my Spanish? But that's good. That's good. All right, what do verses 8 through 10 tell us about the difference between believers and unbelievers? No harm in overtaking your believer. Yep. And what's, what's going to happen? They're going to get it. They're going to get it. They're going to get it. A thousand may fall on this side, ten thousand on the other side, but you will be you will be saved. So verses eleven and twelve, who does God use to protect us? Angels. Angels. All right, let's this is the whole group discussion. Let's see if this one goes better. Do we have guardian angels? Do we have a guardian angel? You think so? A, you have an, an angel that's assigned to you to protect you? I'm sure I think about it. One, two, yeah. You got an angel, Michael, and it's through all the Old Testament. They've got Gabriel and, and all those other angels. Seraphim and Sheridan. Yeah, and I was talking with uh, a wow, what is it? And Michael killed 180,000. Soldiers and the hand And they, I don't want to do it. Yeah, so, we know that we have those angels. Yeah. They're written down. But do you think you have a singular angel? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not single, but I'm not sure what I do. I think there's a unique angel that has been Oh, yeah, that's why I have them. Oh, oh, yeah. I got to testify that. Yeah? Yeah, I am uh, getting ready to jump into a dog fight. Like an actual dog fight? An actual dog fight. Okay. And this dog had my dog and it was round and, and I was getting ready to say, okay, I, I'm fixing to get you dog. 
to sure. come in near you. Okay. And all of a sudden, an angel stopped, stopped that attack. Okay. Because he used the only the only name out and said he called the dog's name, his name was Convict. Like convicts? Yeah. name is convict. Okay. Good bad situation. Yeah. And I could see that since I was getting ready, con convict and I had made lock eye contact. <laughs> and something stopped me. It was a it was an angel of the Lord and said, hey, stop us. And he, and he took it over, and uh, you know I was rescued from that situation and my dog. So I don't, I don't, think, I don't count that up to me just saying a quick prayer. Somebody, God sent somebody in that situation to stop that attack. Mm -hmm. So that, well, one, I love this story. That's the story. But two, back to this. How many of you would say we have guardian angels? Um, how many how many y'all would say you have specifically? I don't I don't know I I don't say I don't know 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 I and this person came on. The person with the last bag, he ran up to the flight. His bag was being loaded onto the flight. And all of a sudden, his bag fell off and burst in the plane. What? Yes. Now, the ramp agent came up and said, he was just white in the face. He said, you won't believe what happened. The last person getting on this plane, his bag fell off and burst in the plane. Now, if he had that bag had gotten on the flight, we would have taken off. We would have had a fire under the airplane. We could not fly. Well, do you think it's one of the specific guardian angel or something? Yeah, that one. That you might have want to sign me. Yeah, you want to sign me. me but you can't <laughs> hire me. Say it all. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, yeah, I love, all right. So, this is a group discussion, but way better than last one. Um, <laughs> But does anywhere in God's word say that we have a singular guardian angel watching us? We don't have specific guardian angels, but God does choose which one is going for us. Thank you. That's, that is the nail. That is the nail already. Yeah. Um, yeah. We don't have a single one like. But. George is my own You may not have Michael. You, yeah. you don't have Michael. You may have Michael, but Michael's not a sign. You and Gabriel's not a sign. You and so on and so forth. Uh, what God does promise that the angels will protect us. We may not know who or how many, but um, they will. I, Pastor and I were doing shut ins this past week, and I used Psalm 91 as the devotion. And one of the things I said to them is, why would we constrict a single angel to ourselves when God promises angels? And at any time, there could be legions upon legions of angels fighting for any one of us and protecting us. And it can take more than one, depending on yeah. the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I think that that you know, delays when I'm driving, keep yeah. me from getting an accident. You yeah. know, when I hit every stop sign going down in 1941 trying to get home in the afternoon, it's slowing me down for a reason. Yeah. yeah. Don't know why, but you know. So sometimes you don't get to see a reason, but sometimes maybe you do see a reason, and it's thank God, thank you, God, for protecting me. Using the angels. Yeah. I have a Lutheran question. Yeah. So in the morning prayer, um, let your holy angel be with me that the wicked bow may have no power to me. Is the one angel. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ, for your son, and that he's back in my heart and major. Please keep me to fail to fulfill the reason that my good life can please you and your hands are my body is all off. And let your holy angel be with me that the wicked bow may have no power to me. Amen. Ooh, I don't know about that. Uh huh. What um, holy angel is it about? But that was Martin Luther, so that was Martin Luther. Yeah. Um, it was like every different one. <laughs> so 
Yeah. Um, wow. Okay. Um, can I pass you on that one? I don't. I don't know the answer to that one. I don't want to throw something out in the yeah. Okay. So. Well, that's like, no, no, we thought your answer was right as you were like, which she's like, what is it these angels? And I'm like, wait a minute. I said that for every morning, and it has angels. Uh, I guess I never I never paid attention to that. It's an angel or angels. Okay. I will look that up this week and I'll get back to you someday. Yeah. So well, the meaning of the word is this like it's legions of angels about. They have many. Yeah, they have yeah. physicality. Yeah. We don't, but we just gotta know that we have that protection and record yeah. in yeah. Psalm 91. Yeah, I don't do I go through this here? I don't know if I threw it here. We're gonna, we're off track anyway. We're not gonna we're we're not gonna finish this Bible study the Bible. So then but what is the comfort about all power for not all for not only really powerful angels, more powerful than you. What's the comfort of them protecting. God. Yeah, they're there to serve you. I mean, it doesn't make sense that you as a human would be more valuable than mm -hmm. an angel who's way, way more powerful than you, but that's that's how God willed it to be. That's that's the comfort. So people don't go around saying, I love you. No, <laughs> yeah. you have no you're kind of word is love. <laughs> When it comes to God protecting Yes, I will say rolling dice and something like that. That is, I don't think God changes dice for us. But yeah. All right. Who and where are verses 11 and 12 quoted elsewhere in Scripture? So who yeah. tells the devil? And what's, what's the scene? It is Matthew 4. Um, it's where Jesus was tempted by Satan. And then he was. Satan knows the Bible. Yeah. Satan knows the Bible. Why is that? Why does Satan know the Bible so well? Yeah. He's an angel. He's an angel. So, what huge moments of God's grace in verse 13 remind you of? What what verse in the Bible uses similar language? Genesis three fifteen. Genesis three fifteen. The first promise of the Savior, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. It's a New Testament. I don't know where it is. It's not my biblical reference. It says the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. Didn't want to call the letters. It's like yeah. There's a lot of Paul's letters. I have. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, um, the language in this psalm definitely can remind us of the first promise of the Savior. And when um, David, David, you know, fights the lion, the yeah. um, uh, um, Samson. Yep. Yeah. All those things are covered in that language. Mm -hmm. Did I miss one? No, no, no. Hi. speaking now. Oh, there we are. Who is speaking now? Uh, God. Sounds like we need much. What comfort does this bring to believers? That if we love them, we will leave them. What is that? If we love God, He will be there for us. So comfort Him. Yeah. But the back to pronouns, the person speaking versus 14, 16 changes. If God's speaking, now God's speaking to me. Right. But He's confirming, He's making that promise to us. Yeah. If we believe in Him, He will be there for us. Yes, 100%. Um, it's His promise. It's His promise. It's a personal promise to us. Um, it's not just the angels he says to protect us, but God. He does use the angels of God also himself. 
can and will and does send his hand in your life to, to protect you. So, list situations in which you might turn to Psalm 91. Come up with at least two in your group. No need to share this one. I'll share my two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Romans 16, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Romans 16, verse 20. That's in person. Mm -hmm. So, bonus verse there. Yeah. If you see his life, or I'm not going to say grow, but if you just got grow, it's like right. the last chapter, he's like, bye, 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 love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. By the way, I've got to be the same person. I'm not sure. Right in the middle of the spot. Oh, by the way. Yeah, seriously. It's like, bye, it's like right there. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah. I'm just not saying it's so I think the Holy Spirit has something to do. Who are we accustomed to? It's great songs. Yeah. All right. I don't know what you came up with, but I'll see what I came up with. Um, we can use a song. I thought when. We or a loved one of ours is sick or injured. Uh, my mind went to cancer immediately or something that big. That's scary. Uh, but God, we the song reminds us that God, God's got that in control. He's working that out for our good and one good. And then the second one I use is um, it's just a bad thing, you know, like. Car breaks down on Monday, washer breaks down Tuesday, you're late for something on Wednesday. Just things seem as if they can't go right. They just keep on going wrong. Um, I said, uh, and then if that, if that makes us that makes us feel as if God is in control, God is doing everything for our good because all this these little annoyances or big annoyances or big problems keep happening. Um, but Psalm 91 and all this said, yeah. Everything's in control. You know, I might have a bad day. Things might not go the way I want them to, but it's 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 all there is all there is from you guys. So. Jesus said all the psalms testify about him. Where do you see Jesus in the psalm? Well, the Genesis version of the creation of Christ and the Christ. So this psalm can remind us. Of Genesis three fifteen and the promise of Saul, and then we also see the Saul made his weakness his temptation too. And I thought that was interesting. Take a minute, in one sense, describe the main message of this psalm. These next two are just for you. No need to share them with me. What does what this psalm mean for you? And then number fifteen, how this psalm affects. Your week, your life. My thing is for part of the, you know, the uh, seen and unseen things. You mm -hmm. make that confession. Uh, he is there for all things, seen and unseen, to protect us. Uh, we don't, we have no idea what we're going to be facing each day, every day we get up. Yeah. You just reminded me of, I think it was Psalm. 139. Oh. Yeah. So the first Sunday I was here when I got saw the pastor was doing Psalm 139 for a Bible study. It talks about the darkness. Can I can can I hide in the darkness? No. God sees what we see, and God sees even more of what we can't see. Um, so yeah. When, I love the Psalms because when you really dig into the Psalms, you can you really start seeing things that go from one Psalm to the other. 
So I'm going to think of talking about two totally different things um, that are all connected. And the easy answer to that is yes, it's all God's word, and God wrote it. God knew it was the only perfect God. Um, which of the literature of the Psalms, I think, is really cool. Thanks. Just how that piece together. It's amazing how many choir rooms and songs and stuff like that have been from the Psalms. Because I've been doing the Bible through the years this year for the first time. Okay. And the songs that I have, I'm just like, oh, that came from that, that song. <laughs> you know, that I finally inquired from years ago. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of like this one. I keep having on in my head. I can't turn it off. Yeah. Oh, and then what is it? Shoot, why am I forgetting the name? What's the great Martin Luther hymn that we sent every reformation? A mighty fortress. I couldn't remember it for uh, a mighty fortress is based off of Psalm 46, another another psalm of refuge. And I jotted those kind of things in the margins when I read it. Oh, yeah. That's it. Or the liturgy. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna be singing Psalm 111 and you know, it's the next week or one time we have yeah, ever heard that. But um, it's just I must praise you. Mm -hmm. Or you know, these are awesome. Yeah. Yeah, there's a song we read that. Yep. Conclusion. The world around us is intimidating. The wicked seem the wicked seem to do but they plead no consequences. Christians are going through tough times, and in those times, our sin makes it easy to forget about God's promises. Psalm 91 roots us back to the refuge of God's word and promises. The devil, the world, and our sinful flesh cannot conquer us because Christ reigns victorious. The psalm, the hymn that kept going through my mind as I was preparing this Bible study was Christian worship 699, take the world, but give me these. Take the world and give me Jesus. Um, I just thought that I wrote that down because I thought that hymn was really applicable to Psalm 91. Written by a blind lady. Was it she, she sang across the front that she's blind. Okay, I did not know. So think about it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You learned something? The sweetness of beauty she's writing about, she didn't see it, yeah, but she, she knew it was coming. She felt it. She, she knew it was coming. The promises are real. And then let's finish this. Let's finish the class with prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of faith, grant us the true and saving faith and, pre and preserve us against all temptations to not trust your promises. Blot out our iniquities by your blood. Cover our sins with your righteousness and let your angel be a fence wall around us against all our enemies. And teach us to know the secret of your Father's will. In your name, sir. Amen.